would you describe yourself as a bit of a nice guy sometimes? Absolutely. Yes. You so you want correct. people to like you, right? You want people to feel comfortable around you. You want people to think you're engaged and you like what they say. I think that's where all this comes from. And it does the opposite, right? People like people who are real, who are authentic, mm -hmm. who even can tell someone, fuck off in a nice way. You know, like, eh, whatever. You know, I don't. Like, people really respect that. Even maybe you outrage some people, but people respect people who are authentic. You brought out that point. He went in and approached him a granddaughter-grandma combination. And the grandmother was like on his side. She was like, Hezbo's not internet, Hezbo. Understand if you're my, busy tonight. My message is that the internet is not what I do. See? <laughs> Grandma gets it. <laughs> she gets it. But she seemed to be saying, you should get some dick before you're my age. You were saying how like you went in and had that feeling of nervousness, but you had a sense that it kind of melted away yeah. as the interaction went on. Yeah. Right. All very normal, especially when you haven't done this much or at all, that your body is activated. Let's replace the word anxiety and nervousness with activated because that's more accurate and more useful. And uh, as you settle in, feel your feet, feel your breathing, allow whatever's going to happen to happen. There's no point trying to control the outcome. We're moving towards certain outcomes, but we can't control them. Uh, and then you'll feel more comfortable with it as you get more reps in. All right, so what we're going to do now is follow me. We're going to walk through there to a slightly less obvious place and we're going to do a class on how to stop ladies on the street correct like because there is ways to do it and ways not and this will you know be relevant I mean for everybody so that you're not freaking her out and you're also not just letting girls sweep by how to stop them confidently clearly without making them feel like you might be some kind of killer all right let's go okay so we're gonna look at stopping um, I'm gonna jump right into it pretty much like better practice it than talk too much about it the main things I want to say is be aware of her space in general. Like that was very important in the session I just had with my guys. And there is a lot of sub communication going on, right? Not by far, not all communication is verbal. There's a lot of nonverbal communication happening in seduction. And mainly I would even argue at the very first one or two seconds, right? You're basically telling her things like what kind of man you are almost. How much are you reading her signals? How respectful are you of her space? How aware are you when she makes a certain movement? If you see that, adjust to it, if you completely ignore it, right? Maybe she takes a step back and you instantly follow her. So she's kind of saying, uh, when you're standing like this, like maybe Shay can stand here. Like, you know, maybe uh, I'm the girl now, he's the guy, and he talks to me, and the, me as the girl, I take a step back, and he comes following me. Now the communication was, I'm not okay with this distance, I'm okay with this distance, and he said, I don't give a fuck, I wanna stand here, right? So now that tells me, I don't really wanna continue with this guy, because he's not reading my signals, he's not really feeling me, he's not really a gentle man, okay? So keep that in mind, in general, with approaching, to, there's a lot of nonverbal things going on. When it comes to stopping, another thing I want to say is the girl is in a completely different mindset in the moment you approach her than you are, right? We are here hunting. We're like, our, our focus is sharp. We're looking, this one, this one. We're prepared. We're totally zoned in, you know? We're literally on the hunt. And the girl is like, ah, da, 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 da. you know, she's thinking about a million other things. She's definitely not thinking about which guy is going to approach me right now. Okay, so you need to get to the same mindset. How we do that? By giving her extra time. By not walking past the girl and then being like, hello, you know, like I'm in the hunter mode. She's like, what the fuck? So give girls extra time. That's another like, very common mistake that you see them and you're like, excuse me, you're just too abrupt. You need to let them know earlier. You need to keep more distance. You need to come in with a smile, come in with open eyes, with eye contact, okay? That's really important. Otherwise, even if you do technically the perfect approach or then technically say the perfect things, she just feels a bit weird, 
okay? Let's look how it should be. See the girl, and I decide, the first thing I decide, I decide I want to talk to her, right? So. Hi, excuse me. You look great today. Okay, so even before she's aware of me, I decided this is going to be good. This is going to be great. She's going to like me. I'm a friendly guy. I'm putting a smile on my face. I'm getting my eyes open. And then I'm sending that signal constantly. I'm already sending it here. I'm not like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Maybe I suck. Oh, she hates me. Hello. You know, because then I bring that energy in. So I, I, I look, maybe I use my hand because that, that might make her slow down because it makes her understand, oh, there's something happening here, I don't know what, but a guy tries to talk to me, maybe I should slow down a bit, you know, it can help. So she slows down and that gives me a chance to step in. And then I step in and I end up with my open shoes. I end up like this, right? I don't end up like this. I don't end up like this or here or like that or here. I'm like, hi, like a tree, open, stable, settled in okay what's up gentlemen i hope you're enjoying today's episode right now the natural lifestyles is offering a very limited number of free coaching calls so if you'd like to get on a call with alex leon and discuss your current dating issues things that are not going so well and to create a roadmap for dating seduction and sexual success in 2024 then all you need to do is click the link in the description book in a time that works for you and you'll get a priceless but free call with alex and now back to the video. Okay, what if the girl does not stop, right? Most of the time she might not stop because she's busy, she's on her way, you're not convincing enough, you don't have the presence enough yet that she thinks she should stop. This will get better over time. The better you get at seduction, as we saw in our class, the more you turn into a magnet and girls actually want to uh, stop for you. We need to be committed that she will stop, but also be ready that she does not stop, okay? So the first part looks the same. Walking in, hello, how are you? You look great. And I just arrived in Budapest and it's so nice here. Cool. Right? So committed, going full in, not half, I'm front. She walks, uh, so I'm, I'm in. Hi, decides she doesn't want, I just take a step and walk with her. Okay, let's practice. Yes, much better. Yeah. This feels good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then the next major way to stop is when the girl's walking towards you, my preferred way to do it. So, let's say, you know, I see her from down the street and I happen to be over here. I'm gonna walk, angle myself so that when we meet, we're shoulders brushing past shoulders, right? Now, if I do it like this and I get in front of her from here, she'll probably start avoiding me because I'm, someone's coming directly at you. So, here's how we do it. Slow motion. About here, hand goes out. I slide in. Hi. Cool. Let's go play. Grab a coach, different coach. Hey. Okay. Open your legs. Yes. I yeah. stepped like into myself and then I ended up. Yeah, that. like it's just that. Yes. Right? But this little wave is not as good as the Jedi wave. Which is just... Just these are not the droids you were looking for. It's sexy, it's cool. This one's a bit, you know, boyish, let's say. Yes. Hi. Yes. That's the distance we want? Yes. Nice one. Excuse me, sorry. I just wanted to say I really like your necklace. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, what are you, where are you headed? What are you up to? Uh, I'm waiting for my dad, so. Ah, gotcha. Are you waiting outside for the, whatever this is? Uh, they're waiting for Formula One. Is it Formula One? Yeah. That makes sense. Do you follow Formula One? Yeah. You do? I know nothing about Formula One. And you are Hungarian or are you visiting? Yeah. Okay, very nice. Um, I'm from the US, I'm just Sorry, visiting town. But I'm really amazing. Sure, I'll let you go. Have a nice day. So, definitely, uh, it is interesting with you. You have, how old are you now? 26. 26, cool. Yeah. And you have some acting background, right? Cool. What does that mean? Can you explain more? Uh, when I was in high school, middle school, college, mm -hmm. I acted throughout that. I did mm -hmm. like stage straight acting, so not musical theater, but like serious plays. Okay. And I did a lot of Shakespeare. Okay, wow. Yeah. 
I guess that's why your vocabulary is very good. Like in your client file, some of the words I was like, where is it, man? To Google. Yes. Um, then your pronunciation is very good, your clarity, right? Your your hand movements. I gesture your, a lot. It's like it's, but the, then the problem is, it almost feels like you're acting in real life. Yeah. I don't feel like it's real. Yeah. And the girl, therefore, also not, because I have obviously the intuition of how girls feel by doing a lot of approaching and coaching. So. That is the situation I see. I also notice you, I don't know if another coach told you that already, that you do often do gestures when somebody's talking. You're like, ah, yes, like this, right? Very like Shakespearean, I guess. Um, and all of that makes, like there's a disconnect. It seems like you're playing a role. Yeah. It seems like, why, why is he doing that? Why, why would he make such a movement? Why is he trying to emphasize something like this? Um, is it to support the other one, right? Like I, I noticed when James is making a point, you're like, yes, like this. I want to, like this, a lot of this stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not making fun of you. I'm no, 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 you're telling you me exactly what you're yeah. saying, yes. Uh, and in a group setting, that will make other people think, why is he doing that? That's a bit weird, right? Sure. It's a bit nerdy. Um, there's a disconnect. And in a one-on-one -on -one setting with a girl, when it's like overly staged, it's almost like so timed. Uh, now the example was like the Formula One. Even you already knew that it's about Formula One because we talked about it four minutes ago, exactly. right? Exactly. So even there was an act. You're acting right. like you don't know, which is fine sometimes. Yeah. But then like, oh, come on. Huh. That makes sense. Like it's a little, I'm oh, exaggerating. Of course. They feel that. So for you, uh, the main thing I would say in the next approaches is subtracting a lot of these behaviors. Mm -hmm. Like almost being boring. Like your goal should be to be a very boring guy. Okay. You know, who is like, she should feel like the other extreme. Not like, why is he so energetic and weird and moves so much and smiles suddenly and then he's serious again, but then he smiles again and he's serious again. She should be like, wow, this guy is really chill. Like almost too chill, you know? Like try to find that other extreme and then we meet somewhere in the middle. Right. Um, which is like serious, you're listening. You can practice it with me as well now, right? It's just like no radical hand movements. Um, yeah, you need to take away things now other than adding stuff. Sounds good. Okay. So, now we're doing real approaches. So you now know, now know how to stop them. Correct like. Think, I don't want to overload you with very much theory at all, but let's just think about two important things. How to open and how to close. We'll start with closing. When you're asking, if, if the girl stayed and talked to you for any length of time and she's not going like this, then ask her out. Not ask for a contact, ask her out. There's a very big difference, right? Because you had one before where this Norwegian girl was like this, and then you were like, oh, get your Instagram, eh? You did say it like that, but I imagine you did. And she's like, okay. And then you said, all right, cool, see ya. <laughs> and she was a bit, she was like, okay. Like, he got a follower, she got a follower, but it wasn't clear to her what was going on. Right, where, and she was a backpacker who was here alone and she liked him, right? Text her actually, now. So, it's like, especially you're here for a good time, not a long time, got anything better to do tonight than go out with a hot girl? No, didn't think so. So when you meet them in the next while, you say whatever, and when you think you've run out of shit to say, or it's time to leave, or she says she has to go, you say, listen, it's been fun chatting, you are something, you seem awesome, you got a good vibe, yeah? You say, like, you've got a good energy, you've got a good vibe, you seem cool, no one can argue with that, and everyone would like that about themselves, right? So, listen, uh, it's been cool chatting. You've got a nice vibe. Uh, I'd love to take you out for a drink tonight. Can I get your WhatsApp? It's a proposal for a date as opposed to let's exchange contacts for what reason. Is, if, you, if you make that change, it's the difference between a girl saying a hard yes and a hard no, or getting a flaky nothing Instagram, which is a soft close, which doesn't really help. Right, so it's better she says no or yes, because a yes means that we're gonna move something happen and get something happening. Right, so the context for the close is, especially if you're only having a short interaction, you don't know much about her, you ran out of shit to say, it's important you say something about her. Because if I just said, oh, hey, what's your name? Cool, where are you from? Cool, uh, can I get your number and take you out? It's a bit like, what, why? Whereas the same thing, and I say, listen, you got a cool vibe, and then, no, we don't know each other, I can say that as well. Or maybe this is a bit crazy, but I'd love to take you out tonight and get to know you. That makes sense as a proposal. It's still ballsy and kind of out of the blue, but it makes sense. 
and then she'll give you a yes or a no. If she says, oh, look, I'm not sure, eh, eh, then maybe we can downgrade to like, all right, well, let's just swap Instagrams, we'll stay in touch. Okay, we can downgrade to the like, not as good clothes, do do that as well, but go for a proper close and, and propose a date for tonight. And she's like, I'm busy tonight. All right, I'll get your number, I'll text you, maybe we can meet in the next couple of days. Make sense? Hi. You look very dreamy. I just wanted to say I really like your top and you're very cute. Thank you. What's your name? Yeah. Zeb. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you Hungarian? No, no, no. You are? Poland. Polish. Polish? Yeah. I'm Polish as well. But I'm very, very bad Pole. Nanie mówię po polsku? And I've never been to Poland. <laughs> But my babsha is Polish, uh -huh. and my mom has taught me some Polish things. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Are you visiting the city? Yes, yes, with my friends. With your friends, very nice. Yeah. Um, I am too. I'm on vacation, mm -hmm. and it's probably close for you, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so like one hour flight. Flew. From where in Poland? Yes. From which city? Uh, Warsaw. We Warsaw. From Warsaw, yeah, but like I live uh, further. I see. Um, I wanted to stop you because I thought you were very pretty and I don't know what your plans are for this vacation, but maybe we could get the chance to get a coffee and get to know each other better. Actually, I'm leaving tomorrow. You're leaving tomorrow? Yes, yes, yes. Do you have plans tonight? Yes. You too. Oh, tragic. However, I do have another offer for you. I will be in Poland in two weeks because I'm making my way south through the Balkans and then I will make my way back up. If you want to connect, maybe when I'm in Warsaw, perhaps. Sure. Yes, we can just chat on Instagram. You can see if you like me. You can see if I'm strange or... Okay. I promise I'm not strange. I'm just an American. We're very friendly. We will see. We will see. That sounds like a good thing. Do you use Instagram? Yes, I do. Perfect. You can show me your... Yes. So you don't have to memorize how to type. You're just having a quiet afternoon walking around the town square without your friends? Yeah, I actually went to the church and uh, yeah, my friends are there. I just... Uh, you got bored. <laughs> There's probably a lot of churches that you've seen before. Yeah. Did you go up to the top? No, no, no. I no. just buy like the cheap ones. Right. You have to pay extra to go up top. Mm -hmm. Last time I was in Budapest, I went up though, and the view of the city is very beautiful. So yeah. get one of your friends to go up, they can take pictures, and then you can say you did too. <laughs> you can yeah. pretend. Okay, I, I, I do. Perfect. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a lovely day. Enjoy the rest of your time in Budapest. Thank you. And maybe I will see you when I am in Warsaw. Okay, okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, good. So conversation-wise, I think that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, jumping in still, like you need to be more laid back. Yeah, right? even more. Like relax, relax. Right, right. You you don't need to overly confirm things. Like sometimes, uh, that makes sense. You know, like you know, oh, okay, yeah. it's better than. You don't need to show them so much that you're engaged and you're listening, right? It's like you're doing it too much. Most people don't do it enough. You're doing it too much, and the smile seems fake when you smile. I don't want you to do a fake smile because, like, is it fake? Yeah, I think it is because it seems fake. I just say no, it's fake um, because I feel like that. And I, I would assume she feels the same. And it's just pleasing, right? I mean, would you describe yourself as a bit of a nice guy sometimes? Absolutely. Yes. You've so you want correct. people to like you, right? You want people to feel comfortable around you. You want people to think you're engaged and you like what they say. I think that's where all this comes from. And it does the opposite, right? People like people who are real, who are authentic, who even can tell someone, fuck off in a nice way. You know, like, ah, eh, whatever. You know, I don't. Like, people really respect that. Even maybe you outrage some people, but people respect people who are authentic. Um, so that's your core mission. Not just today, not just this week, but the whole year. Becoming more authentic. It's a, it's a long journey, I would think. Um, cool. I like how you stepped down the offer, you know, and then you call it an offer. I hope in a joking way. I think she yes. got it. It was fine. Yes. I got an offer. Okay. Uh, it's fine. 
don't get too much into negotiation mode, but you said it in a charming, fun way, so it's fine. Um, and she accepted that. Cool. Go like this, you could... I mean, we're short on time and it's better to do infield now, but if you would not be on the mic now, you could take her on an instant date, maybe. It's kind of the perfect situation, right? I'm just telling you, you want to have it on your mind at all times, that instant dates are definitely an option and the best option. Like, if a girl is free, she's bored, she's not in a rush, take her on a coffee for 20 minutes, right? That's, that's the best way to see a girl again is to take her on a mini date right at the front, uh, right at the approach, because then she already has this experience of, oh yeah, I know the guy, he was not weird, I was sitting next to him, uh, I felt really comfortable with him. Basically then the real first date will be the second date, right? Um, and then you can escalate already more, so that's good. Always have it in the back of your mind that instant date is an option. Hi. Sia, your orange skirt is so vibrant. Oh, You're thank standing you. out amongst a sea oh, of everyone dressed you. in gray so and black. Nice from you. What's your name? Zeb. Where are you from? I am from the US. From the US? Oh, huh? yes. stuck here. <laughs> yes, I know. Long way, right? Yeah, Originally, yeah. I come from Hawaii. Oh. Yes, but I live in New York City now. That's really exotic. A little bit. And what are you doing here in the past? Just getting lost, enjoying the city. <laughs> I came here last summer and I loved it. And now, this summer, I'm on vacation for four months. And so I decided I would come back to, to Budapest for a little while more. to discover it more. Exactly. exactly. Alone? Alone, yes. But other parts of my trip will be with my sister, who mm -hmm. lives in Portugal mm -hmm. and is in the Balkans right now, or with friends I have in Berlin or Paris or wherever. It's so, yeah. very good. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I'm going to Sicily in September, and that will be my very first alone trip, solo trip. So. I'm just discovering this this way of traveling. Of traveling. How yeah. do you feel about it right now? Exciting. Excited, Good. yeah. Yeah. It can be, you can feel a lot of things. Yeah. I've done solo travel for a little bit now. Mm -hmm. Before my first trip, I was excited. And then the day before, I thought to myself, uh-oh, who am I going to meet? What am I going to do? Yeah. And how was it? It's uh, not so like, bad. You can so go up bad. to people, yeah. you can introduce yourself, yeah. you can meet them, and it's not so bad. You can be spontaneous. That's the best part, I think. No? I think so, actually. Yeah. When you're with a group, there can be good things, right? You get to share experiences with people you care about. But also, if somebody is hungry and you want to go see the museum, sometimes you won't get to see the museum. Sometimes you have to go do something else. So um, it's nice to have the freedom when you are solo to stop mm -hmm. and have an ice cream or enjoy the sunset or whatever it is you want to do. So Sicily in September, you said? Yeah. Okay. How long are you going for? For a week. A week. For a start. I, yes. think good. <laughs> I think that's good, actually. Yeah. Like one week is enough time to get to know a place. Mm -hmm. Not too much that you will become homesick yeah. and really yeah. miss being and back. How here. about but you? Are you getting homesick? <laughs> I've been traveling for two weeks now, mm -hmm. which means I have three and a half months left. So hopefully I don't get homesick yet. I have really enjoyed this trip so far though. Oh. I've met some amazing people, I've seen some incredible things already. I've gotten no sleep, so I'm very tired. <laughs> You're making the most out of it. Exactly. I figure while I am here, I have no work, oh. I can just enjoy life. Go and to the New fullest. York is one of my favorite cities. You've been to New York. What do you like about it? I don't, maybe that uh, the ocean is close also, and also the mountains, so you can get everything. Because, uh, <laughs> And the city is vibrant. Really. Yes. That's why I was laughing is because I was like, nobody comes to New York for the ocean and the mountains. Everyone comes to New York for the city. But yes, it's amazing. It's yeah, vibrant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love New York. Uh, yeah. Well, are you in Budapest for the next few days or are you going yeah. off somewhere else? Yeah, okay. I'm, in, I'm living here. Would you actually. like to get a coffee or something sometime? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Amazing. Do you have WhatsApp or Instagram? How do you Instagram. like to get? Instagram would be great. Okay. And then I can remember your face. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so let me search. Alright, just. Yeah, let's do it. Perfect. And you are right? Yeah. And I am? Zip. Yes, very good. Uh, Hungarian keyboard is very confusing. Uh, sorry. <laughs> you can switch to English. No, it's good. Um, or... hey, your English is amazing too. I'm very impressed. Oh, thank Some you. Hungarians are like, oh, no, I don't speak English. And I, I have always to say, worked in English, so that's why. Makes sense. 
But you, you looked at me so confidently and you said Zia, I was like, yes, I look European. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Perfect. I'm trying not to be American. Yeah. Keep, it, keep it a secret, yeah, okay? Right. It's our secret. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Um, uh, perfect. I will text you maybe later okay. tonight okay. if you're free. Yeah, yeah. Or tomorrow or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll Okay, it's sounds good. There's plenty of cute the bars. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to visit a friend. Amazing. He's living here. Okay. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Have a nice day. Same to you. Bye. Bye. Stop smiling, bro. You're smiling too much. <laughs> well, I'm happy, that's why. So, uh, great. Love it. It was fun. Yes. She loved you. Yeah, she loved me. You still did a lot of acting, <laughs> hand movements, but it's fine. You got away with it. Uh, just, I mean, the main feedback here is openers don't make them about things. Yeah. Make it about her. Her. You said your uh, skirt is vibrant. Like, no, 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 Editor, can you put in that meme? No, 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 no. Um, yeah, the family guy, say, yes. That skirt makes you look vibrant, right? right. Same thing, but, but not slightly different. Uh, you know, you really stand out with that skirt. Oh, wow, you know, like, I love that you wear that skirt. Whatever variation, it's about her. It's about her wearing it, it's about her standing out, it's about her being that type of person who would wear a thing like that. Right there. Hang on. Or, wow, you must be so fine. Uh, not funny, but you must be... You must be a positive person uh, with, with that outfit. Whatever it is, right. you can use the outfit, but right. it's about her. Right. Okay? Cool. Good job. First session, way more to go. Yeah. Already killing it. Much more growth. So, have I ever approached a girl during a day and it led to spending the night together? No. Looking back on it, it does feel surreal that I was able to just walk up to her in the middle of the street and set that up. That's the amazing part for me. I think a lot of the things that I expected from this workshop, I knew were possible. I'd seen happen in videos, I'd heard people talk about, and I was like, yeah, that definitely happens, but you don't have the emotional lived experience of having gone through that. And now having gone through that myself, um, we were asked to actually list out three things that we'd like to accomplish by the end of the workshop. And I wrote this down as I go, like, meet a girl, ask her out, go on a date with her, and have an adventure together that, that evening or the next evening or something. It was a little bit vague, I didn't know where things would lead, and I thought it was also a stretch. I'm like, I'm a beginner at this, it's probably not gonna work, it's probably gonna take, I don't know, a few weeks, a few hundred girls for this to happen, but the fact that it was like maybe the 10th or 20th girl that I had ever talked to, just randomly in the street, um, it's kind of funny to me. Okay, so second principle is what? Intent. Oh, very good. All right, what does that mean? You said what you want from an interaction. Yeah. Okay, so some examples of, because there's not only one thing we want, there might be many things. So what might we want to, well, it's, what do you mean by want? Get to know the person, or find the parents, have sex, have a real, deeper relationship. Okay, cool. Now we may not know those things for a while especially the deeper relationship things. So let's think about it in, in the context of, okay, you're having a five minute conversation with someone or 10 minutes that you just met out on the street or in a bar or whatever. What do we want to be communi or sub-communicating that is happening below the surface of the verbal communication? If we're interested to find out about the person, to get to know them. Right, and we were talking about this earlier, right? Like the kind of, what makes the difference between a pickup artist and a seducer or a guy who's just crunching numbers and a guy who is a lover is a man that, what? Expand on that, like what we were talking well, about. Someone who is curious about the, the person. Yeah. Uh, who wants to uh, like understand the, the, the beauty of the person. Right. All the aspects are supposed to be just pick up. Right. Because Absolutely. And we were talking about this, that this morning in terms of what do women want and what do people want in general. They want to be seen for their individuality, for the, for the unique feminine aspect that she has and so on. Okay, so I see Disha down the street and I think, fuck, she's hot. Right, so I want to go and meet her, and that is should be my first intention. I wish to meet this person. Don't worry yet about what's going to happen in the relationship or the sex or my pickup techniques or whatever, because often we overthink things and that causes us to not take action. We're like, ah, oh, yeah, but what do I say? And then what I'm going to do next, and so on. Your instigating uh, and pr propulsion essentially should be this: I wish to meet you, because you can almost always achieve that, at least to go and say hi. 
it makes the other steps simpler. We can, we can just go and do that. Now, what's the vibe that fits along with that message? Is it this? Hi, I saw you there and I want to meet you. I'm James, good to meet you. What do you like? Okay, is this good? No. no? The, the problem there is my intention is to get through it. Right, to get, okay, do the saying, the things, can we get to the sex now, or you know, see if this is gonna work or not. It's not seductive in any way. Okay, so the vibe that I'm looking for there in that initial moment is warm, it's friendly, it's curious, right? And yes, there's an element to it that it's not just that I'm talking to any random person that I find her attractive. So there's, there's attraction in it, but it's not necessarily sexual, right? Because if I go in with heavy, heavy sexual intent without any, let's say, invitation, what is that? Creepy. Yeah. So let's say I went over and I said, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Okay, that's my I want to meet you energy. Right? Now, if I was to then give her a compliment, I love this outfit on you. It's, uh, it's like kind of hippie, but it's also very elegant. Thank you. Okay. There's my words. Right? That's a compliment. Is it a, the best compliment in the world? No, it's fine. Okay. But what's the vibe below that? What's the intent? Because I could just go over and say, hi, how are you? I saw you from over there. I think you look amazing today. What's your name? I said the same kind of shit, but she's, she's not going to really feel what I want to transmit. So what am I trying to... You hear it every day. You hear it every day. <laughs> what is that like? I've never had a woman come and do that. Oh, no, I did actually one time when I was standing out the DHV in Vegas, this black lady came over to me and she said, now you all look like you should be on the cover of some fashion magazine. I was like, wow, that's the only time it's ever happened in my life. And she was like 50. All right. <laughs> and I still think about it. All right, so what would be the intention I want to transmit? in that compliment. Not just, uh, individuality. Yes, right, so it's, it's, it's specific to her as opposed to, hey, you're hot, like, you know, just as if I'm rattling that off to everybody. Like, hey, you're beautiful, like, eh, wow. Well, mm. why, why does that, is that word specifically doesn't do anything for you? Mm -mm. Why? Because I know it. Mm -hmm. but, but, this, but the fact that you said about my dress, it's just something more personalized. Right, and because yeah. elegance is earned. Right? So you have to, you, like, you don't get born. Even if you're hot, it doesn't necessarily mean you're elegant. Yeah, because this is the effort I put. Mm -hmm. I was thinking how to dress, where I'm going to, but beauty is like you have it already. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yep. However, like, you can certainly, you can say something about the woman is beautiful or sexy, the way she laughs, the way she moves, you know, the things that are specific to her as, as opposed to, as she said, you know, beauty is, is like kind of a static thing. Okay, so what I'm getting at here is there's an appreciation, there's an intention of like, I'm attracted, but it's not necessarily, necessarily sexual. It's like she's a work of art, which she is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would be, in the context of the drill we're about to do, it's the second intention. And it also makes sense chronologically in an interaction most of the time, right? Now, I don't always even have to say the, I think you're something words. You know, I can be like, stop. Who are you, right? The like, I think you're beautiful is implied by my look, right? So I'm not, I don't always, and I don't even think it's the best thing to do to always go over and tell a woman that you find her physically attractive. Yeah, I mean, it certainly, I certainly have done it many times and there's many other times where it's implied. Okay, so that would be our second intention. Now, let's say I've given her a compliment, she put up with it, she likes it, and now we're having a chat. Uh, so I've asked some general chit chat about what she's doing today, where she's off to. Uh, and then I say, what are, you, what are you doing in life? What's important to you right now? Helping people. Helping people? Have you helped people lately? Yeah, every day. Oh, wow, every day. Okay, that's wonderful. You must be very empathetic. Okay, so there's the words, right? But what would be the intention of this moment here, or this extended moment? Curiosity. Yep. Yes, this is what we talked, what uh, Mikkel was talking about before. The I want to know you actually as a person. And that's where the kind of bulk of conversation will typically be. Right? We have other aspects of flirting and qualifying and, and general chit chat, which is just, which is, uh, don't think of chit chat as a nothing. Like the point of small talk is what? To suss out the things the person cares about and then be able to go deeper. Yes, and for those who don't know what suss is. To, I was about to say elucidate and people are not gonna know what elucidate to is. To figure out. To figure out, yes. thank you. Okay, so yes, it's like opening threads where we might find something that's important. Yes, but there's another reason that's probably much more important. Because you can, we can suss things out by just asking direct questions. Who, who doesn't like, who thinks they don't like small talk? Okay, it's a common thing men say, I don't like small talk, but there's a real reason why we use it. 
It's basically like finding common ground of basic communication and the vibe, right? It's, it's lightweight conversation, so we don't have to think too much about it, and she doesn't have to think too much about it, which, because if I go straight over to her and say, what's your story, or tell me about your childhood traumas or whatever, uh, that's gonna be too much too soon. Whereas if I'm like, what's the plan today? It may, may sound like nothing, but it's like, okay, we're syncing up with the basic communication style, matching and mirroring, figuring out the pacing, right? And, and it's light and easy, which then settles us into the conversation and then we can move on to like deeper, let's say, or you know, more personal stuff. The fourth intention that we do absolutely need to do, especially for very nice guys, is project sexual intent. Okay, so this is something that you wanna think of as using like a spice. It's not something that I'm blazing all the time and like guys often ask me these questions like, you know, on dates, you know, uh, how early do I need to like start talking about sex? And I'm like, what? I would say very rarely talk about sex on dates. If it comes up in conversation or it comes up as like a, a topic about, I don't know, you're reading Fifty Shades of Grey or something, yeah, fine, and there'll be ways. But me trying to specifically talk about sex does not turn women on generally. It's the insinuation and, and the suggestion of, of it without saying it that makes it sexy. Right, that's what creates sexual tension. Right, me bluntly saying, so what kind of sex things do you like? Uh, suddenly pulls the rug out from it because now we're talking about it in an analytical way and that's not what we want to do. Right, so keep that in mind because it's a common thing guys think, oh, I have to be direct and I have to go straight for what I want. I have to get to, this, get to sexual intent. Yes, but sexual intent comes with a look. It comes with a gentle touch. You know, it comes with the space in between the words. That's the stuff that actually starts to create that anticipation and boiling, uh, like unresolved tension that then wants to resolve hopefully later physically as opposed to let's talk about it and take all the magic out of it. And the fifth intent, which is vitally important, we've had a good chat and this happened with you today, right? So you were talking to that Norwegian girl who was, got, did you text her? Yeah. Did she text back? Oh. Well, that's because you didn't ask her out properly. Yeah. Now you know for next time. So. We've been having a chat, blah, 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 we like each other, that's cool. And I say, all right, cool, well, it's been great chatting, uh, let's swap Instagrams. And she's like, okay, and we'll swap Instagrams, and then I'll look at her photos for the rest of my life. Women want to be taken out. They don't want to, like, you know, exchange contacts full stop. They don't want to, like, maybe hang out sometime. They either do or don't want to see you again. And often, this is extremely common with women in general, they will be activated by your decisiveness. Right? A girl can be totally, like, maybe, probably not, and then you say, all right, listen, you're rad, I wanna hang out with you tonight, are you free? And she's like, oh, from a like maybe, yeah, oh, okay, he's got balls, he knows what he wants, yeah, I'll give him a shot. Yes? Yes. Agreed. Agreed, mm -hmm. all right, good. Feel free to like go, ah, excuse me, as the ladies in the room, we'll tell you what's up. <laughs> all right, in my experience. So, this decisiveness, this pulling the trigger, this actually showing her in, in that moment that yes, I want you, I'm interested in you, and I'm being a man, and I'm taking action and gonna go for it, and I'm, and I'm t willing to take the risk to be rejected. All right? Then she can give you a hard yes or a hard no. Uh, and if it is a yes, it's much more likely to be a non-flaky actual yes. In terms of pressure and release, which we haven't talked about a lot yet, but you're aware of that as a concept, do I want to have pressure or release when I'm asking, requesting for the woman to allow me to escalate in any kind of way. And, in, and asking her out is an escalation. Pressure or release? Okay, so that would look like this. So we've been chatting, da da da. Cool, yeah, so anyway, in the rest of the summer, you're gonna be, that's awesome. Um, all right, so I wanna take you out tonight, so give me a number. Hmm. Maybe the other one? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> right, so the, the problem, and I, we certainly hear this many times with guys who are you know, not so experienced. They've been like chatting and they're like, all right, and now just go for it and it becomes intense. Okay, so no, it's more like, yep. Uh, all right, well, listen, you're awesome. I'd love to take you out tonight. Are you free? Mm, probably, yes. Let me just check my schedule. Uh-huh. There's nothing on that. All right, you are free. Okay, well, okay, yeah, in that case, uh, give me a WhatsApp and I'll text you later with a place. Okay, sounds great. That's a release of pressure, but it's still very clear. Don't think of like, releasing pressure doesn't mean that it doesn't have certainty. There's a vibe in that, right? It's like, it's gonna be fun because in those moments where she decides, escalation points are to stop and talk to you at all, to give you her name, to give you any personal information about herself, uh, to give you a contact detail, to actually come out and meet you, to follow you where it is that you're going, right? To allow or and or reciprocate your touch 
right through to the bedroom, all of those escalation points, we want those to be easy and fun for her to follow you. All right? so the let's go attitude, join me, follow me, has to be, which is like the, I wanna take you out tonight, or let's go and have some fun tonight, or do you like, you know, do you like cocktails and fancy glasses, I know a place, whatever it is, needs to be done with that intention of, trust me, it's gonna be fun being with me. Because right, she has to make a big leap of faith to go from flirting with a stranger on the street to actually dressing up and going out with him and dealing with the possible awkwardness and possible danger of going out with a dude she doesn't, has no contextual uh, knowledge of. So we package all that down into five steps. So this is the drill you're going to be practicing. I'll just do it once so you can see. I want to meet you. Sorry? You just stand there looking pretty. No, no, that's my instruction to you. Stand there and look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Start again. A little note on shaking ladies' hands. Here's the not do's. We don't do the Australian handshake. Oh. Yeah. We don't do the supplicating handshake. Jiggling one. It's like masturbating my hand. <laughs> I mean, you went, that was not what I was thinking, but sure. Good or bad? No, no joking <laughs> off the... <laughs> you're a sicko. <laughs> All right, and not the Japanese uh, slash Portuguese handshake. Yep, that's what they do in Portuguese villages and they don't look you in the eye. <laughs> and I was always like gripping them and they didn't like me, so now I do that way in Portugal. Okay, so what we do, offer the hand, she comes here and then hug her hand, don't crush, hug and let it drop. And what happened to her hips then? She drifted. Right? I didn't pull her, it's just because I'm centered and then she comes a little closer and she wants, maybe feels like, and if I was in a bar, that would be a simple transition to come in here and speak to her, okay? Let's go. Okay, your last part was better. Okay, very important here. Looks scary when you say, let's go. Like, yeah. You see, I show it in this angle, can you turn like this so he sees? It looks like, let's go. <laughs> Just back. It's not up fun. No, You're like, no. let's go. Or let's, let's go. go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so it's like, come with me. Let's go. It's the the tension gets released. Okay. Right. It's right. like release, not pressure. Like the I want you. Yes. And then breathing a bit. Yeah. And when you go. start in front, don't come to me like you start saying speak. You know, come a bit then speak. <laughs> Welcome to Eastern Europe. Yes. That must be uh, strange for you. To a little have, bit. A uh, girl speak like this, maybe? No, it's amazing to have very honest feedback. Let's go. It is better. It is better. Okay, talk to me about the experience. Felt good. What, what, what and why felt good? Sorry? Why, what felt good? I felt like um, unlocking my energy basically. You unlocking your energy? Yeah. Right. I felt uh, like a man. Uh huh. Good feeling. Yeah. And often that makes her feel like a worm. And, and you see that the reactions, like, they're not faking them. Like, it's enjoyable even though there's strangers and we don't know each other and whatever. It's like it actually becomes a real energetic exchange. Yeah, we can think of this sexual intent as like a zap, right? But I'm, al I'm allowing it to build inside me, like my, um, my actual arousal and sexual attraction to the person, you know, like drinking her in, you know, feeling like you want to consume her in a way. You know, to, like, and this is like positive objectification, right? So we're not just doing this to necessarily to random people on the street that we've never spoken to or sitting with their boyfriend or something, but like you're on a date or you're in a conversation and there's some kind of vibe going on, and then at some point I just get a little dreamy in my eyes and zap them in the eye for a moment, yeah, and then I break it again. Yeah, maybe it's just for a second. But she'll get the message, right? Because men rarely, like most, most nice guys never do that, right? They will see that kind of look from guys who are being negatively objectifying, which is basically just seeing her as a piece of meat and not registering whether or not she likes that. Right? But for a man who's a gentleman, who can look her in the eyes with, I'm going to fuck you eyes, that's a pretty powerful and rare combination. At some point in the interaction, and certainly on the date, that, that moment where I just give her those sex eyes, even just for a, just for a second, yeah, so I let her know, no, this, I do want you. I mean it. Right? I'm serious about this. And lots of women 
will only respond to that. Like as in not all the, they have to see that in a man to bother going out with him. Because otherwise if it's, if it's just kind of bland and there's, there's, there's no masculinity behind it, she won't be turned on and she's like, no, nah, I've seen this before and I know where this ends in awkward, boring sex or like an average date, why bother? Right? And there'll be variations, right? Some girls will be you know, much more chill or much more uh, shy. And, and you, I've certainly had it where I projected a sexual intention and she blushes and looks away. Okay, that's not bad. It just means I need to back that off. It still had an effect, but it's like I realize, okay, that's too... I, I, I can easily get too intense with that as well. And other girls will match it and just punch it back at you and it boils, right? And or it might be shy at some point and then an hour and a cocktail later, it might be different. Yeah. And then the let's go is really important. That's the, I want to see you tonight. Yeah, it's the like, we've been in the bar for a drink and instead of staying there and talking for another three hours, I say, hey, do you want to go for a walk? Like I keep the date moving so it actually has some momentum, right? It's getting to the doorstep, you know, the North American dating model of like, where we get to the doorstep, I'm like, oh, what's going to happen now? Do you want to come up and have a cup of tea? Or are you coming up, right? Because so many nights have in the round, there's been millions of times on this planet where two people could have and wanted to have sex, but the man didn't say, do you want to come upstairs? And then you just stood there and they were like, oh, and she's like, well, I better go. And like, oh, okay. And they leave. And if the guy just said, do you want to come upstairs for a cup of tea? It would have been better for everybody. So be that guy. Give her the choice to say yes or no. Don't assume it for her. So that's all we have time for today. Can we have a round of applause for our amazing lady assistants? Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, you guys are welcome to leave now. You can you can do your thing now. So thank you. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Yeah, awesome. All right. And uh, same for you. Just get the fuck out of here. Good on you. Well done. You survived day one. We did a lot today, right? Big day. Feel like a kind of a lifetime in a day. Yeah, yeah. All right. So remembering, what do we do? We learn how to move, how to be aware, how to pump up our state. We went out and broke the ice and did some weird stuff and all survived and had a bit of fun. And then we got to go out and uh, go and, like all of you probably, I mean, pretty much I'm sure, went out and did a whole bunch of stuff you've never done or rarely done in your life. And uh, a bunch of you got some contacts and numbers and then we just learned how to have good talks and that. Fuck yeah, day one done. All right, see you tomorrow. There you have it, episode two in our docu-series about what goes on behind the scenes in a natural lifestyles workshop. Now, if you'd like to be more than just a spectator and get this area of your life sorted in 2024, we've got a couple of amazing options for you. Right now, I'm offering a limited number of free coaching spots. So if you'd like to get on a call with Alex Leon, discuss your current issues and work on strategies to make sure that this year is not one that is wasted in hoping, swiping and waiting, but one where you are proactive and get what you want in your dating, sexual and seduction life, then now's your chance. Click the link in the description put in your details, book in a time and uh, get on a call with Alex. And for the guys that are really want to get this sorted and are ready to go, you should consider joining us for one of our live workshops coming up in spring and summer. The next one is in late April in Budapest, Hungary, one of the best cities in the world to practice seduction due to the high concentration of super hot girls. So we've got full details below, limited spots on that. So if you'd like to join us and become a natural this year, now's your chance. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace.